voltage and quantitative uniform fields. We're going to look at uniform fields first. Okay. I have to bring a few things together first. You may not understand what it means immediately. We'll look at an example that will bring it all together, trust me. You just got to follow and trust that, trust that I can lead you there. One, recall that electric field strength is defined by E equals F on Q. Yeah? So therefore, the force experienced by a charge in an E field is just F equals QE. Right? Your syllabus doesn't actually write this, but it does write that. Um, this, we have it there for you because we want you to realize that that's how fields are defined in the first place. F is your uh, electric force or force on the charge. Q is, Q is the charge, E is the electric field strength. Um, if that's in newtons and that's in coulombs, then that's in newtons per coulomb. That's your unit for electric field strength at the moment. Now, the change in a charge's electric potential energy as it moves through an E field, we talked about this before. We talked about how as you move a mass in a gravitational field, um, you have to work against the gravitational field, so you're giving it GPE, and that's according to mg times h. Well, in an electric field, it's the exact same thing. If this is actually an electric field, and I have a charge Q, then if I were to try give it electric potential energy, move it against the field, I would be doing a work, and that would be, the work would just be the uh, electric force times my distance moved in the field, right? The electric force is Q times E, right? And so, that means the work done is going to be Q times E times D, the distance I moved through the field, right? This is the common notation that we use in um, electricity. I'm not 100% sure why. This could very well just be displacement. Right? And in fact, this really comes from F times S. So really, this should be, you know, th these should be E as a vector, D as a vector, and really you could do QED cos theta. Right? All of that stuff would be probably valid ways of thinking about it. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is that that work is basically analogous to electric potential energy. Right? I'm saying electric potential energy equals QED, just like gravitational potential energy equals M, G, and H. Now, I'm trying to really draw these parallels to GPE there. And in fact, we can draw even more parallels. What is Q and what is M? They are both what? Field property is what I'm looking for, right? Q is what gives you your electric field. M is what gives you your gravitational field. These are your field properties. What is G and what is E? Field strength, the force is these two times together. E and G is the field strength. That's gravitational field strength. That's electric field strength. Are we seeing this? Are we seeing this? And the last thing, D and H, they're both just your displacement. Right? These are the distances that are parallel to the field lines, i.e. it's your component of displacement that's parallel to your force. Right? These are the same thing. Yeah? Electric potential energy is very much the same as gravitational potential energy. Now, in your syllabus, they don't actually talk about electric potential energy. They just talk about the work done in a gravitation. Sorry, the work done in an electric field is just Q times E times D. Right? That's what they that's what they say. And so they often talk about delta U equals QED, or you might see in your formula sheet W equals QED. But it's the same thing, right? The work done against the field and the potential energy in the field is the same thing. Any questions about that so far? Good. We power through. That leads us to voltage. Voltage, and it's a very thick definition that you can't understand until after the example, it is a measure of difference between two points. Uh, voltage is not a thing that happens at a point or at another point. It is a difference between two points. We're doing one point minus the other point. It is a difference in electrical potential between those two points. Not electrical potential energy, but electrical potential. There is a difference between those two things, and basically, um, electrical potential is independent of the magnitude of charge. So if I, if I show you what that means, right? If I have a uh, charge, and I, that charge has some electrical potential energy, if I replace that charge with a larger charge, do you all agree it has more electrical potential energy? Yeah, because it's got a bigger Q, right? Well, if, I, if that charge has some voltage compared to the ground, and I replace it with a bigger charge that has some voltage to to the ground, both of them would have the same voltage. Right? That's what I mean when I say that voltage is independent of the magnitude of charge. We're trying to define it in a way so that it doesn't actually change if you change your charge. Right? These sort of things are really useful to us in physics because it means that we can actually ignore the specific thing that we're looking at and just look at the bigger picture. For example, in kinematics, your kinematics equations don't care about your mass. Right? 
changing your mass doesn't change your kinematics equations. Same thing here. Voltage does not depend on the mass itself. It's almost as if it's the, I'm not going to, it's not actually, but it's, voltage is to electric fields what kinematics is to motion. Right, it's the same thing. Yeah, that's exactly right. You've just, you've just skipped on ahead to the next slide. You're 100% right. Yeah, so if you think about what that means, um, you, you'll be getting yourself on the right track. The next few slides are all about trying to understand that. So V is your voltage, also called your potential difference. Um, I think potential difference is shorthand for electrical potential difference. It's the difference in electrical potential between two points. Delta U, or U is your electrical potential energy, so the delta means the difference between the two points. And then Q is your charge, right? And so, yeah, exactly right. As, um, as Kingston said, that means that we are, we are basically having the QED, but then dividing the Q away. Um, so that just becomes V equals ED. Guys, you have a new quantity here. Voltage or potential difference is a new quantity. The unit for it is volts. This is the first time where you have a quantity where the symbol for the unit is the same as the symbol for the quantity. So it can get a bit annoying. The quantity is voltage with the symbol V. The unit is volt or volts with the symbol capital V. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't 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 get that uh, confused. Yeah. Okay. We'll take what Kingston did. We combine that with our um, understanding of what electrical potential is in a electric field, and we get ourselves to E V equals E D. Your syllabus writes this as E equals V on D, but I think if you think about it like this, it might give you a bit better of an understanding as to what it actually means. Um, but yeah, this means that in a uniform electric field, the voltage between two points is given by E equals V on D. So if I have one point and another point, and there's an electric field connecting these two points, and the distance between them is D, and the voltage between these two points is capital V, then the electric field strength that's between those two points is going to be given by E equals V on D. Now, any two points, if I have the voltage between them and the distance between them, I will find the electric field strength between them. E is your electric field strength, V is your voltage, D is the distance between the points. Hey folks, we have a new unit here. Apply your uh, dimensional analysis. If that's in volts and that's in meters, then that's in volts per meter. So the unit for electric field strength is volts per meter. Um, so volts per meter and newtons per coulomb are actually the same unit. Um, we more commonly use volts per meter for electric field strength, so I recommend just using that most of the time. We'll see in a second why that's so powerful. That was a lot. We're going to look at an example that brings it all together over the course of like 10 minutes, but does anyone have any quick questions first? Are you ready? Okay. It's all right, you got this, you got this, you got this. I believe, I believe. All right. Breathe, you can do it. Here's an electric field. Firstly, you don't need to draw this, but what can you draw in this field? Field lines. What type of field lines do I have? Parallel because it's a uniform field, right? They go from positive to negative. Do we agree? Good. So they're always evenly spaced. You can do a better job than me. What else can you draw? The perpendicular lines. What are they called? The red ones. Equipotential. Equipotential lines. Beautiful. Good. There's your equipotential lines. They are evenly spaced. Yes, you should add the distance between the two plates. And if you have the field strength, you should throw that on there as well. Very good. OK. Now what I'm going to do, and I've rubbed this out just because I want you guys to know you can do it, right? I'm going to put a 2 coulomb charge halfway between these oppositely charged parallel plates. Now I've chosen 2 coulombs because it's an easy number so that we can not worry about the maths here. In reality, in electric fields, we're working with, you know, 10 to the minus 19 coulombs is the charge on an electron, right? These are tiny things. Real charges are tiny. Right? But for us, we'll just keep the math simple for now. It is here. It is a positive charge. What's the direction of force it experiences? Towards the negative plate, towards the right. Good. That's the force. Can you find the value of this force? Using what equation? Yes, equals V over D. Not, not helpful for finding the force first. What are you, what are you thinking, Kingston? Yeah, 
see how the force, right, for the work is equal to the, what's the word? The electrical field force, right? That's yep. the capital E. Yeah. So with F just equal to B over D. Uh, no, so the F does not equal E. F equals QE. Oh. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So we'll bring that back out. So F equals QE, right? Um, if we have the field strength and we times it by the charge, we get the force. Good. Do we have the charge? Do we have the field strength? So 30 volts per meter, so we get a force of 60 newtons. Cool. That's the first thing. Does this force change as the charge moves throughout the field? Are we confident? Force, force goes up. Does the force change? Guys, I want yes. you to come to an agreement. Does the force yes. change or not? Absolutely, yes. Why are you saying no, Kingston? It's a uniform field. It's the same everywhere. That's right. Well done. Same force here, same force there, same everywhere. Right. So it's the same force. Correct. Correct. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. No, it's totally fine to be wrong, right? Supported in rhyme. Do we agree? that if we let go of this charge, it's going to accelerate because of the field, and it's going to speed up. Yeah? So it's going to gain kinetic energy. Until right before it hits the negative plate, right before it, it's going to have some velocity, some kinetic energy, some speed. Right? Now, whenever we talk about this sort of stuff, we're always talking about things until right before they actually hit the plate, until right before it, 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 it moves on. But I'm just caring about when it's inside of the field, so I don't actually care about after it hits the plate, it becomes stationary. I don't care about that. I just care about when it's inside the field. Yeah. So we all agree it's going to have some final kinetic energy. Now, how might you go about finding this kinetic energy? Half equals mv squared. Okay, half equals mv squared. How do you find the v? Uh, kinematics. Okay, you could use kinematics. How would we all use kinematics here? Find out force. force, use f equals ma to find our acceleration. Use kinematics to find our final velocity. Ah, that's a great question. We can't do kinematics because we don't have the mass. Yeah, you're 100% right. We don't have the mass. So we can't actually do kinematics here. You guys recall ages ago in module two when we taught you, when we told you about conservation of energy and conservation of momentum, and we told you that they're new toolkits for you, and we told you that sometimes some toolkits are useful and you should pick the right toolkit. Here's an example where the kinematics toolkit fails us. We can't do kinematics. We have to instead do work energy analysis, right, which is the fancy way of saying apply conservation of energy. Right. The final kinetic energy here is going to equal your initial potential energy. Yeah? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, so for Jono, uh, yes, if your total kinetic plus uh, potential energy should stay the same throughout. So all of this is going to get converted into that or transformed into that as you move through the field. That's right. Yeah, very good. So we have an initial potential energy. We can find this, can't we? It's Q times E times D. Uh, what's Q? What's E? What's D? Ah, very good. You guys all know this. The D is the distance that we're moving through, right? It's only going to move a 0 0.05 meter distance, so it's going to be 0 0.05. So that gives us a U of 3 joules. Do we agree on three joules? Yeah. It's easier if you do 2 times 0 0.5, 0 .5, so it becomes 0 0.1 times 30. Yeah. Maths. I hate maths. All right. So therefore, we found that our final kinetic energy is going to be three joules. Right? Job well done. You could use that to find your velocity if you really wanted to. That's totally fine. Now, because we learn about voltage, let's just try to see what happens if we use voltage here as well. Um, I'm going to ask you, from its start point to its finish point, recall voltage is the difference in potential between those two points, or the change in potential energy over charge between those two points, right? So the voltage is your delta U um, on Q. What's delta U going to be? Yeah, it's just this QED. It's just this value, right? Because it's initially 3, and then it's 0 at the end, right? So it's just 3. And then our Q is just the 2 coulombs. So we're just going to get 1.5, what's our unit for voltage? Volts. Volts. Great. So that means from this point to this point, 
we lost three joules of energy. We had a voltage we had a voltage of 1.5 volts between those two points. Okay, great. Now we're going to have to do the exact same thing, but for a different charge. It's not going to be too, that long, don't worry. Let's say that the charge is actually 4 coulombs instead. I want us to step through and see how everything changes, if that's the case. Firstly, how does the force change? It's doubled. How does your potential energy change? It's doubled. How does my final kinetic change? It's doubled. How does my voltage change? It's 6 over 4. Oh, oh, yeah, wait. Oh. The Q is 4. Right, yeah, the Q is 4 now. So it's the same. Hey, you know how we say voltage is independent of your charge? That's exactly what we mean, right? Now, here's the deal, right? I stepped through this entire process with you, and I could have gone even more detail by doing the kinematics with you. I tried to not do that because that would have taken ages, right? When we're actually working with electric fields and stuff, do you think we can work with individual charges very commonly in physics? No, right? It's really hard to work with individual charges. With masses, we can work with individual masses, right? So we might work out the energy of a single mass and work with that really well. But for charges, in like an electric circuit, right, you've got like 10 to the 19 charges flowing past a bit of the circuit every single second, right? So that's not practical. So almost all of the time, we actually use voltage instead. And voltage is a really, really, really useful shortcut because it means whatever charge amount I'm working with, however much that charge is, the voltage is always going to be the same thing. And yet, the voltage is still really useful because I can always use this to get back to understanding the energy changes and even the forces potentially too. Right. And then that leads me to the one final point that, I, that really excites me, which is if you look at this, what does this volts per meter thing actually mean? That means that... Go for it. Wait. Catch this. Oh, shut it. Uh, every meter, the charge experiences 30 volts. Very good, very good. Shub. <laughs> very nice, right? Moving one meter through this strength electric field gives you 30 volts. We move, if we move 0 0.1 meters through it, you gain 3 volts. If you move 0 0.05 meters through it, you gain 1.5 volts. Yeah? That's what that means. Now do you guys have any questions? So this would all like so if you up the voltage it increases like heat output and whatever. if you up the voltage you will get more kinetic energy output at the end in this scenario. Um, in an electric circuit you might get more heat output, you might get more light output. Oh, that's such a great question. Um, I would say it's all impacting each other, right? There's no, there's no one thing is the first principle. All of this stuff is self-consistent. You've got to remember, physics is made up, man. Everything here is just made up, and if it wasn't self-consistent, there would be an issue. But there is no thing that's like the most important. All of it's related to each other. Yeah. It's math. It's math. Oh, my God. Okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, 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 no. All right, right. Very good. I want to point out a few more things about voltage before we move on. Uh, when we consider any form of potential energy, things like gravitational potential, electric potential, and then also voltage, it's not the absolute uh, values that actually matter. It's the relative values that matter, right? We can actually define any point to be zero, and all of the other points are measured relative to it. So, for example, the common convention is to take the negative plate as uh, an electric potential of zero volts and then the positive to be an electric potential of whatever, right? But you could define it the other way around, right? You could define it like this and it would still be valid, right? The critical thing is if I go from positive to negative, it's going to go from, it's, I'm going to lose three volts going from positive to negative. As in which of these three methods is better? Yeah, would it be better for the, the top one? Like, if we define negative as zero, would that be better for calculation-wise? In general, yeah, this is the easiest for calculations, and that's why it's convention, 100%. It's also just easier for people to understand as well. Yeah, but all of them will be valid. By the way, I said before that we didn't have a good definition for electric potential. 
electric potential is electric potential energy that is independent of charge, right? So this is saying that the electric potential at this point is zero volts, the electric potential at this plate is three volts, and then the electric potential difference or potential difference between the two plates is three volts, i.e. the voltage between the two plates is three volts. That's what all that stuff means. Yeah? Well done, you guys did great.